All right, it looks like based on that x-ray, you have a cavity. So we'll need to get it treated soon. All right, so you've been diagnosed with tooth decay. Now what? Well, you know you're gonna need to get treated, right? You're probably wondering if it's gonna hurt. Well, thanks to dental anesthesia and sedatives, you can get through that dental procedure with no pain at all. I'm Melissa, registered dental hygienist and senior burst ambassador. I'll be discussing the different types of dental anesthesia, how they work, and the possible side effects that can occur. <sighs> dental anesthesia and sedation meds help patients relax while you're being treated. Now, especially for that one person that you're already feeling anxious even before you're sitting in the dental chair. And on an important note, please be sure to talk to your dentist about your health history. Have you been hospitalized? Be honest about your, all your medications you're taking, which includes both prescription and recreational drugs. If you fail to disclose this important health information, the dental anesthesia side effects could have a very negative impact to your health. All right, let's start talking about the different types of dental anesthetics. Well, let's start off with the most commonly used one, local anesthetics. Now, these are the numbing medication injections your dentist and in most states, your dental hygienist can use to desensitize the area of the mouth being treated. It works by deadening the nerve endings by injection, preventing you from feeling any pain or discomfort for at least a few hours. You're saying injection. Are you meaning a shot? Yes, you will need a shot. But not to worry. A topical anesthetic, aka numbing gel, is applied before the injection to help reduce any discomfort during the injection process. Now, it does take several minutes to take effect once the numbness starts to kick in, but you should, really shouldn't feel any pain. You may notice a little bit of pressure or movement during the dental treatment, which is very common. Now, if you want to feel relaxed without getting completely knocked out, nitrous oxide is a great option. It's often called laughing gas because it makes you feel giggly. Now, this is a lighter sedative that's fast acting and quickly reversible. How it works is that nitrous oxide is breathed in your nose with a soft nose piece and tube delivering the gas during the dental procedure. Now you'll remain fully alert to allow you to answer any questions or follow any instructions by your dentist, but it will feel as if you've had a few glasses of wine. Now this will help you feel more relaxed in a dental chair. That's why it works so well. Next is oral sedation, AKA pill sedation. Now this is really great for managing patients with anxiety. Now it's stronger than laughing gas, but doesn't involve IV sedation and it's safe for kids and adults who just want to take the edge off. Um, this medication is taken orally about an hour before the planned procedure. So it does gradually make you feel sleepy and relaxed and it doubles as an amnesic medication. So you're less likely to even remember anything about your visit. Now the sedative does last for a few hours before it starts to wear off. So your dentist might choose to use oral sedation for longer treatment like root canals, crowns, placement of implants, a great option for children who also have just trouble sitting still. Now a step up from oral sedation is IV sedation, also called twilight sleep sedation. Now this is used by delivering through an intravenous line in your arm. It works quickly and predictably for the desired length of time. And it's given in small amounts over a period of time until you are sufficiently sedated. Now, general anesthesia uses a combination of medications that make you feel completely asleep during the appointment. It's commonly used for oral surgeries like wisdom teeth removal or placing multiple dental implants. A dentist might also use IV sedation for a child with extensive treatment needs or special needs patients that prevent them from receiving routine dental care. Now, for most general dental practices, you're not likely going to see general anesthesia as an option, but it's very common to be seen in oral surgery practices, offices that have a visiting anesthesiologist for larger treatment like full mouth reconstruction or for children who need extensive treatment. And that's usually seen by a pediatric dentist in a hospital setting. This is the one where you're completely put under and you won't feel anything because your mind and body are both completely unaware of what's going on. So let's talk about the side effects of dental anesthesia. Some of the most common side effects of local anesthetics are soreness, swelling, or bruising. Now, in rare cases, temporary facial paralysis can happen in the area where the medication was injected. Now, some people may also experience a, a rapid heart rate in the beginning, which may last a few minutes. This is due to epinephrine. This is used in local anesthetics to help prolong the numbing effects. Even though dental anesthesia and sedation can be used in most situations, there are some risk factors that may contraindicate which type of medication to use. 
Now that's why it's so important to be honest and open about your medical condition. Pregnancy is one of the examples of that. The American Dental Association says that local anesthetics with epinephrine may be used during pregnancy, but there are some types of anesthetic medications that may be safer options to use while pregnant. Now, if you think you're possibly pregnant, do let your dentist know so they can adjust your anesthetic choice. Now, special needs patients, especially if they have underlying medical conditions or heart issues, there may be a certain sedative or anesthetic medication that may be a better choice to use. For patients who have heart issues, epinephrine, the vasoconstrictor we talked about earlier used in local anesthesia, may lead to your heart rate to increase and make it more difficult to control. So it would be a great idea to get a medical clearance before administering anesthetic. Or the dentist may choose an anesthetic without any epinephrine at all. But according to most dental experts, the biggest risks of having sedation or anesthesia during the appointment time include pain in the injection site, some bruising in the face, possible nerve damage. You may notice difficulty passing urine, noticing a prolonged headache, nausea or vomiting. You may have a sore throat, allergic reactions can occur. You may notice a confusion or hallucinations, irregular heart rate or chills. It is extremely rare to have someone die because of sedation or anesthesia medications because when you work with an experienced licensed provider, you are upfront and honest about all the medical conditions. So the risk of having a life-threatening situation is almost unheard of. Now, how long does it take to wear off? So light sedatives like nitrous oxide wear off within just a few minutes of your dentist turning them off. On the other hand, the numbing effect of local anesthesia lasts for about four to five hours, although some people may metabolize it quicker than others. So it does vary in time. It is recommended though to avoid eating until the numbness goes away so that you don't accidentally bite down on your lip, tongue, or your cheek. Now, oral sedation typically lasts for a set period of time, about three to four hours. This gives your dentist enough time to get you comfortable, treat your teeth, and then send you back home before everything wears off. Now, IV and general anesthesia are controlled by steady delivering of medication. This allows the anesthesiologist or the dentist to set exactly how long they need to work and when they stop working. But once the medication's turned off, you're still gonna feel groggy for several hours. Do plan to take the rest of the day off and take it easy at home. If for any reason that you experience anesthesia side effects lasting more than one day, do contact your dental office. Now, unless you're only getting local anesthetic, which is only numb for a specific area, or nitrous oxide, which quickly wears off, pill sedation, twilight sleep sedation, and general anesthesia is like the equivalent of driving under the influence, which means you cannot drive yourself home afterward. You'll need a plan on having someone drive you home and take care of you until you start feeling better. Ultimately, you and your dental team should discuss the best choice of anesthetic for your specific treatment need. And if you've recently had dental treatment and want to share your experience with the anesthesia or the sedatives that you took, please comment below. And be sure to hit the like button if you found my video helpful. And do subscribe to Burst TV to catch all the latest videos our talented Burst crew creates. Take care.